A municipality spending taxpayers' money on a soccer team that loses far more often than it wins would rightly raise eyebrows. But when that municipality is facing financial ruin, unable to deliver even the most basic of services, serious questions need to be asked. In KZN's Msunduzi municipality, Peter Marisburg residents live alongside uncollected waste and raw sewage. And yet its mayor still saw it fit to sponsor a Premier Soccer League club in a multi-million rand deal. A club owned by a controversial millionaire. This is the story of a collapsing municipality. It has been run badly uh, for an extended period of time and now the chickens are all coming home to rest. A mayor of a provincial capital who seems to be in denial. This municipality is now back on the road to its functionality. A soccer team owned by a reality TV star, tenderpreneur and convicted fraudster. You know, in, in my case, God, when he shows up, he shows off. Her son, who was the first teenage chairman and sometimes captain of the PSL team his mother bought him. And the disturbing question of a 27 million rand sponsorship deal. Peter Maritzburg, with its wealth of Victorian heritage, can seem like a city where time has slowed down. Like many inner cities in the country, service delivery is noticeably lacking. The roads are pockmarked with potholes, litter collects unchecked. Dimming traffic lights stand as reminders of a forgotten order. The decay of the city is causing a lot of frustration. In, in just exiting our store, you'd see the congestion of taxis, the traffic disorder. For over a hundred years, the clothing store Asmals has been dressing the city's residents, but business is becoming challenging. Kantha Naidu, who's been with the company for 17 years, gives us a first-hand look at the issues they face every day. So you recall I mentioned that the wall has become a urinal. Oh, and, right, and as you can see, the drainage system, so we have to get this cleaned up regularly. Yeah, yeah. So, it's as terrible. a result of the wall becoming a urinal, we've put a sprinkler system, we've created our own concept, and the water will come through, flush out, and we get somebody to come through and clean the pavement with chip dip, etc. So, that's the area. It smells terrible here. It does smell terrible, but so this is a good day. This is a good day. <laughs> this is a good day, yes. Kantha Naidu says while the municipality does clean the main streets, the side streets are ignored and have turned into dumping sites. To take charge, businesses rent a skip and hire workers to sanitize the gutters and remove the garbage. To address the urine problem, they've innovated. This is what it's come to in the Peter Marisburg city center. The stench here, it's almost suffocating. This is what it's come to in the Peter Maritzburg city center. The stench here is overwhelming. This urinal was installed by the businesses who can't count on the city to clean up, drain the sewers, or even truck away the waste. Peter Maritzburg is run by the Msunduzi municipality, which was placed under administration in 2019 for a host of problems, including irregular expenditure, maladministration, and councillor absenteeism. The Peter Maritzburg and Midlands Chamber of Business speaks for about 700 business owners who worry about the city's future. Melanie Vaness heads it up. So, Melanie, how would you describe the business sentiment in the Msunduzi municipality right now? Desperate, absolutely desperate. From a service delivery point of view, our companies are really battling. It's got so bad for some businesses, the insecurity um, and poor quality of electricity supply that some big manufacturers have threatened to uh, stop using Maritzburg companies. When it was placed under administration in 2019, Msunduzi owed ESCOM 209 million rands. Nearly five years later, and they now owe 881 million rands and a further 521 million rands to Umgeni Utukela Water. Cash flow has been dire for years. In August last year, 
the municipality only had 27 days of cash on hand. Yeah. Do you know what the situation is right now? We um, probably around 20 days. It's definitely less than one month. Less than a month's money? Yeah. That is dangerous territory. Yeah, no, we, we were in very dangerous waters. This is put sign air, left footed shots, and Lerner makes the save. Despite its staggering and spiraling deaths, Executive Mayor Mzimkulu Tebola recently proudly announced that Msinduzi would be sponsoring a soccer team to the tune of 27 million rand over the next three years. Tell me, Mr. Mayor, why did the municipality decide to sponsor the Royal AM Football Club? When council took that decision, <clears throat> We knew very well that there is no direct benefit. When I say direct benefit to the municipality, I mean in terms of rents and cents that will be paid into the city's coffers. And you're convinced there is a benefit, even if it's not rents and cents? I, I am convinced. And I believe the city and the people of the city are convinced. This is the Royal Ranch or the training ground of the club that's on the receiving end of money from a struggling municipality. So, who are they? Well, none other than Nouveau Riche Sensation, a football club called Royal AM, owned by flamboyant reality TV star and convicted fraudster, Sean Mkise. Worth hundreds of millions of rands, Sean Mkise lives a lavish lifestyle having accumulated her wealth through government tenders worth over a billion rands for affordable housing around Durban. Despite facing well-publicized fraud convictions and allegations of tax avoidance by SARS, she flaunts her success. And Dan, how have they done this? We are one united front. You know, we always say that united we stand, divided we fall. I told them today, I said, my I said, I send them, I said, I give them permission to go and kill. Because if they don't kill today, they'll be killed. And I told them today that we are the Royal AM champions today. We must fight with our all. Sean Mkiza says she started a football club for her son and then named it Royal AM. Or is it Royal Andile Mpisane? When Andile Mpisane was just 19, his dream of playing in the Premier Soccer League came true because his mother bought him his very own team. The PSL rights for the Royal AM team cost her a mere 50 million rand. At the moment, I'm the chairman of the club and I've announced uh, Umamki is to be president. I've never thought that one day my son will appoint me as a president. As a mother today, I feel very proud and I'm excited and I'm happy for my son. And looking at what has happened today, for him to finally achieve his dream, to have a club that is named after him, Royal AM. Like mother, like son, Andile Mpisane lives by the mantra, if you've got it, flaunt it. Not only is he the chairman of his own club now, but he plays and captains as he pleases. Soccer pundits have criticized him for playing when many believe he lacks the talent or stamina. He's rather not happy with the the fact that he was uh, subbed out in this uh, match. Shonam Kiza is probably the most controversial soccer boss in South Africa, but she's also not very good at it. Royal AM has had 166 players in five years. That's made them the second worst managed club in the world. They've been fined hundreds of thousands of rands by soccer authorities for infringements, like this one where Sean Mkise brazenly hands out wads of cash to her players on the pitch in front of television cameras immediately after winning a match. When we approached Royal AM for an interview, they declined, citing the sensitivity of the matter. Weren't you cautious or concerned that the reputation of the team might sully the reputation of the municipality? Now, for us, is we must have a team that participates in the elite league. That is what was important to us. As to who are the personalities behind the team, what are they doing, provided they comply with the laws of this country, then we, we, we have a partner. 
Included in the sponsorship deal is the upkeep of the Harry Guala Stadium by the municipality for an unspecified amount. And we were and remain horrified um, that our council would approve a, a blank check because whatever happens at that stadium can be put down to maintenance and, uh, and our municipality must pay. The DA opposition in the council has taken the sponsorship matter to court because they say it was never budgeted for. They want the money to be paid back and used for service delivery. The mayor, though, isn't budging. Out of sponsoring that team, business thrives in the city. So I know in the next two weeks, Kaiser Chiefs will be playing in the city. For that whole week, everybody from everywhere in the country is in this city. Businesses can't see what benefit a soccer sponsorship will bring. It's quite frustrating to hear that our monies are being used for a football club. As, as business, that's not in the priority list. Mm. Contribute so that us who are contributing to the rates base can thrive. But the mayor is confident that his tenure will see the municipality exit administration and become fully functional. I'm actually very proud now to stand up and say everywhere, I'm the mayor of this city because of the achievements that we are making. Well, Mr. Mayor, you know, the businesses in the city don't agree. They believe that things are getting worse. And the question that's arising is, how can you justify the sponsorship of a football club? Now, for this financial year alone, our annual budget is sitting at 8.6 billion rand. We only sponsor a soccer team by 9 million rand per annum. Not including tax, and you pay for the maintenance no, of the Harry Gwana Stadium. including all the costs. It's 27 million, not including the, the value added tax or the CPI inflation. And you're paying for the upkeep of the Harry Guala State. Yes, because we also don't want it to be a white elephant. That is a 2010 legacy stadium. If it does make nobody sense. Nobody utilizes that facility, then it says 78 million that was spent to build that iconic stadium went to waste. In the end, this is a story about a city in decline with a stagnant economy that will be giving money to a millionaire soccer boss for three years, while investors and residents suffer from a lack of leadership and its obvious consequences. Thanks for watching. Why not drop us a comment below? We love reading your opinions. Remember, you can now access Carte Blanche stories anytime, anywhere, even offline. Carte Blanche, the podcast, is now available on all major podcast platforms. So be sure to hit that follow or subscribe button and be part of our growing online family.